Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. On salvage hunters, at a remote salvage yard near Bournemouth, Drew is drawn to a naked lady. Blimey. Beauty, isn't it? That's a bit special, isn't it? Gorgeous. On a visit to an exclusive bed and breakfast in Yorkshire. Uh, what are they worth? For once, he's lost for words. <laughs> <laughs> in Liverpool, he visits a shop that specialises in the unique and bizarre. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What is it with having no arms? Why have they got no arms, any of them? <laughs> and at a top public school, Drew must resist being too charitable. Yes, we are thinking about the conservation and completion of the chapel, you know, and we can... You can pull my heartstrings, but I'm in, I'm in, I'm in full business mode now. Yeah. <laughs> Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. So this is not open to the public, this, then? No. There's some fabulous pieces in here. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. That's amazing. Wow. I'm having a bit of a dance with her now. <laughs> That's an antique. In his hunt for treasure... Here is our junk room. Well, that's quite nice junk. Everything has its price. 100 quid. You're joking. No. 1,500. We'll have a deal. OK. And there's nothing he won't buy. I quite like that. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, hello. With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard is leaving his hard-working team behind to follow up a hot lead. Yeah, but a traditional sure. salvage yard that's been gathering curios and rare pieces for close to four decades. So it's off on a five-hour drive to Ferndown in Dorset just eight miles inland from the coastal resort of Bournemouth. Rainy day in Bournemouth, then, Drew. A rainy day in Bournemouth. But that's OK. We're off to meet a guy called Peter, Ace Reclamation. I've been doing reclamation all my life. Uh, my father used to do demolition. And over time, it's uh, progressed into what we've got here today. Ace Reclamation carries a wide range of building materials and architectural antiques from the Victorian and Edwardian eras. Bournemouth always had a lot of money down here, particularly in the 19th century. Let's just see. Everyone says I'm fairly hard, but I think I'm fair. But with Drew, if there's a, something that he's interested in, I'll try and do a trade deal for him. Strange place to have a salvage yard, isn't it? It is, yeah. Down a little tiny country lane in a wood and they would appear to have ploughed the little country lane as well. <laughs> Not the best, is it? I think this is definitely a private road. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Drew, how are you doing? To you. Nice to meet you too. How are you doing? Hi, T. How are you doing? How's it going? Good. Not bad for you. Good, good, good. Well, here we are, mate. Blimey, let's crack on with this. Yeah. Wonderful. Got him past the Land Rover. Past the Land Rover. Past the, past the Land Rover. <laughs> what a brilliant yard. You're really tucked away down here, aren't you? Yeah, well, you've always got to sort of search for treasure, haven't you, I suppose? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, true, true. So it's mostly... It's all just building materials out yeah, here? Yeah, down the front of the yard, it's mainly building materials and uh, railway sleepers. Um, then we go into, like, the architectural bits. OK, so troughs. Do you need a horse's head? Uh, not, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> no one's correct. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. The yard's great. It's uh, a good, old-fashioned British architectural salvage yard that's been here 30-odd years. Amazing. Um, and it also has to be one of the tidiest I've ever been to. Incredible. Everything has got its place. So it's mainly reproduction stuff. What are those lamps there, the pier caps? Are they plastic? Uh, I think so. They might be cast aluminium, the, um, the bases on them. Uh, yeah. What about uh, what about these? Eh? Yeah, they're for sale. Are yeah. they? Yeah. There's a little bit of damage on the bottom of right, the right hand side. Oh, oh, you mean the trestles? The trestles. No, Drew. You're joking. Not. I thought you meant the cast no, posts. No, 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 these. No, not for sale. What about those two? 
No, I won't sell them. Why is we that? use them every day. You're joking. Or, yeah, for, for cutting timber, denailing timber. Gutted. Sorry, really? mate. They're very useful. They've been here as long as me. Oh. <laughs> you that's get, a, that's you a, get a definitive no, then. You get some new ones for 100 quid. <laughs> you get some new ones for 40 quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah of course you can. Up. Of course you can. This is the bit of these yards that I like This most. is the graveyard. In fact, got, well, there you go. What are those made out of? The alloy? I'd say they were. Yeah. Yeah, too new. That, is that a real one? Yeah. Got a pair. I might well have a pair. Have it a pair looks, the other one's similar down there, but it hasn't got the glass. Um, no, we'll leave those. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, two. Yeah, shame. The pair of lanterns we've seen, they're almost exactly right, but they're not quite right. And there's a couple of things that I'm just looking at and thinking, no, we need to steer clear of those ones. Nothing wrong with them, but the type of lights that I want, and lanterns like that, have to be absolutely authentic. I've just also spotted this here. What sort of money's that? This late 19th century chimney insert was designed by Thomas Jekyll, an architect and designer from the aesthetic movement, whose innovative ironwork pieces are highly collectible. It could be worth around £400. How much is that? £250. Oh, it's a bit heavy, is it a Jekyll one or...? I don't know, you tell me. I don't know, I'm <laughs> not the expert. <laughs> well, 150 by it. I'll meet you in the middle, 200 quid. You just don't get them anymore, Drew, like that. No. Yeah, I'll have that, thank you. And yes, it is a Jekyll one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good, good starting point. We've bought something. It's a fireplace by one of the designers I absolutely love. Yeah, all right. Good stuff. Okay, yeah, we'll love that. Lovely. And now we're going to go have a look around inside and see what's in there. I haven't been there yet. Inside, he quickly spots another chimney surround. Blimey. <laughs> Beauty, isn't it? That's a bit special, isn't it? Mm. This chimney piece from the early 20th century, with a classical beauty surrounded by a floral motif, was made from freshly blackened cast iron. A fine example of the Art Nouveau period. It could fetch around £2,200. And you know when something's so good, you're looking at it square in the face and you're thinking, that can't be right. That can't be right. Can't be right. I'm not going to see one of those too, too much. Where are you going to find another one, Drew? Rebecca likely buying naked ladies. <laughs> well, they would have used symbolism like that, but she's too modern a figure for this. Really? Yeah. Good though, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've been around the business long enough that I remember this reproduction stuff starting to come into the country in the early 1980s. And it could be that, but I'm looking on the back and it's got lime render, which is right for period, because people would use cement now. What do you want for it? What are you asking? I take 1,500 quid for it. I have asked a lot more for it to the uh, public, but I take 1,500 from, from you. I'm 99% convinced it's right, because the amount of wear to the nuts and bolts on the back is consistent with use. The degradation and rusting to the metal is consistent with use, but I'm still a bit like that. We'll, we'll see. Tricky one. Mm. Tricky one. I'm yeah. not totally convinced by it. There's elements of it that are right, yeah. that feel right, and there's other bits that aren't. We're grand by it. No. Really? Yeah. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard is near Bournemouth at A Salvage Yard with dealer Peter Randall. Blimey. Drew has made an offer on an Art Nouveau chimney piece, but he's concerned about its authenticity, and Peter's holding out for a fair bid. I'm taking a bit of a flyer on that's all. I know you're being honest with you. I know. Twelve and we'll have a deal. 12.50 and we have a deal. 12.50. It's right, but even if it isn't, we've bought it at the right money. Spectacular thing. Not really my style at all. It's just so good. Anyway, let's, um, let's go. Let's leave that now. Yeah. <clears throat> With a second purchase made, it's up the stairs where there's even more architectural salvage. Oh, blimey, you can hear the noise, can't you? The, the rain. rain. The rain. Yeah. 
Have you got that sinking feeling yet, Drew? Hey. Oh, <laughs> you're going to regret that. He'll <laughs> <laughs> it, tap you up for a price. Yeah, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, we're here all week. <laughs> I want to have a quick better look at that. No. No, OK. Despite the massive amount of stock, there's nothing else to tempt Drew. <laughs> I think we're done in here now. Should we, um, we get loaded up? Yeah, go yeah. for it, yeah. Well, you, well, I need some... Yeah, I've, need got some, someone I need some muscles. I've got someone that can help. Great. And we got tea. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say help. I yeah, say hindrance. <laughs> well, today's been great. Um, Ace Reclamation has been ace. Peter's a great guy to deal with. The yard's really well organised. You can go around quite quickly. But what I liked about it, there was layers. They've been here for so long. There's sort of layers, you know, there's like five, six feet of stuff. And you've got to look through that. And that's always interesting. Much appreciated. Yeah, nice to meet you, Drew. And you. I've got your number, and I'll uh, contact you if I get anything interesting. You know the sort of thing I want. Absolutely. It's not really those, but... No, no, but I've got a good feel. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, buddy. Nice Thank one, T. Nice Thank to you. meet you, mate. Pleasure. See you it again. was ace. Thank you, guys. That's what it's <laughs> all about. You. See ya. Cheers. All the best. Yeah, it's been an interesting day. Drew's a great bloke. Uh, learned a little bit along the way, and we've had some good fun, and uh, earned a few quid at the same time. So, generally, yeah, please. Yeah. Ace day, as they say. <laughs> Proper yard. I ended up buying two things I don't very, very rarely buy. But what quality stock? It's a long drive north to Conway, but Drew is looking forward to seeing Rebecca's reaction to his latest purchases. We've been down south. Down south. Very far down south. <laughs> Where? Uh, we've been to a, uh, see a guy called Peter at Ace Reclamation. Oh, yeah. Architectural salvage yes. dealer. And um, we got pretty lucky, I think. Uh, just added to my collection of Jekyll and Jekyll esque. Oh. It's like Jekyll light, this yes. one. <laughs> but uh, it's still right. Oh, well done. I've got three now, so I can sell them. Mm. It's a collection. Yeah. I'll sell them as a collection now. Fantastic. Good, isn't it? Yeah. But just come and have a look at this. Okay. I'll have to just be all right with that. See? Yeah, it's a bit sure. Heavy. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. Wow. I know. It's, it's a good impressive. one. It's impressive. It's real as well. Because it took me an hour staring at it it's and worrying game. about it. Think, is it real? And yes, it is. But I mean, look at it. Oh, that. Wow. That yeah. fish. I love the grotesque fish. It's not really Drew's cup of tea, um, but he says he's 99.9% .9 sure it's genuine. I mean, nice bit of profit, possibly. Um, so he's done all right. A new day. And while Gavin gets to work on polishing the fireplace, Drew and T are back on the road. They're travelling about 130 miles northeast to the village of Austwick on the edge of the Yorkshire Dales. Right, T, we are in the frankly stunning Yorkshire Dales. It is, it's lovely. And I've never been to this bit. It's beautiful, isn't it? And we're off to meet a guy called Michael Pearson at Ostrich Hall. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a small country hall hotel in a tiny little village called Ostwick. We've lived here for 14 years now and been running the place as a B&B for the last seven. Originally built in 1180, Austwick Hall is notable for its 16th century fireplaces and the unique central staircase added by cattle dealer William King in the 19th century. As with every hotel, they have this wonderful thing in hotels that the furniture gets worn out and they throw it in sheds. <laughs> and you come and rescue it. And then we come and try and find it. Are and that's know? what we're doing today. It's mostly furniture and um, is stored at the moment right up at the top of the house in the attics. We've also got a coach house, which we're using at the moment as a storeroom. What you've got around here is big money in the day, uh -huh. maybe a hall, maybe something really good. Excellent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting Drew and hope he can find some things of interest. 
the perfect day would be for him to take the whole lot away. Oh, very nice. That's lovely. Nice balance to the place. Very good. Hi. Welcome. Drew. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Michael. How are nice you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, good. Love the house. Yes. Really it's beautiful, isn't it? Quite special, I think. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. A big, solid Dales. It is. Do come in. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? This is the entrance hall. That's lovely, isn't it? So, I mean, was, this was all... This is all original. Well, the house dates back to the late 16th century, okay. and it wasn't until the early 19th century that it was made much grander. Yeah. And these big columns were put in and all the big sash windows at the front of the house. Ooh, it's sort of like mini grandeur. Well, <laughs> the person who did it was a, a cattle dealer. That's how he made his fortune. Mm. And he was a local man, so I think he was wanting to impress yeah. his fellow villagers Look that he'd me. finally made it. Yes, and, he definitely uh, had. Yes, sadly, the son went bankrupt, so uh, always happens. it then moved out of their family. It's lovely. The chimney piece as well, that's just great, yes. isn't it? The um, fireplace dates from the late 16th century. Can we have a wander around? Yes, let's go through into the, the drawing room. Oh, it's lovely. With, again, another of these late 16th century fireplaces. They are fab and very, very expensive to buy secondhand. Great feeling you've got about the place. Yeah. It's, it's nice, uh, very comfortable. Warm and, and comfortable. These are unusual, aren't they? What are these? Yes, these arches. Um, we know they were put in in the 1870s, but we don't know whether they served any function. Unnecessarily grand, really. Well, yeah. the house is yeah. pretty unnecessarily <laughs> grand. <laughs> but it's great, the pillars. And I love what you've done with the outside. Another balance when you've got all that little topiary and then you've got yes. that. Oh, it's great. Yes. It's great. Oswick Hall is charming. Really, really beautiful. It's got a lovely, soft look to it. Some of the original features in there are very, very good. Um, the furniture is um, mostly new. Um, there's the odd original piece in there, but uh, nothing's caught my eye as yet. Well, we're here to see if you've got anything to sell. I sell. believe you've got, maybe got some stuff in an outbuilding or in the, we in, do, the yes. in the roof. Yes, hopefully we can tempt you to... Uh, yes, please. To I'm easily easy. tempted. Very easily tempted. Very, very low threshold for temptation. Right. I can resist everything but temptation, as they say. Good, yeah. good. <laughs> but, yeah, let's, um, let's have a look around. Let's go outside. Michael takes Drew to the coach house, where much of the B&B's unused furniture is stored. Yes. OK, so this is what spare furniture and yes. stuff in here. It's the two wardrobes yeah. and the sofa. No. They're a bit austere, these. I think mm. the back's been messed with. This doesn't look right. Messed around with that. Um, no, that one's no. no, too much work involved in that one with the reupholstery. Expensive. Yes. Okay. And the wardrobes. Wardrobes, no. Them. Even though it's an almost pair, but no. Not those, not for me. Um, no, not quite. No. Not quite there, I'm afraid. Not no. your sort of thing. Not my sort of thing at the moment. Yes. Five years' time, who knows? But right now. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. No. Okay. Right, so where, where's next then? Up to the. Up to the house and into the attics. Oh, it's like being on stage, isn't it? <laughs> oh, lovely. Right up at the top of the house. Yeah. So pause to catch your breath. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've got some furniture here, yeah. including some old doors that were okay. in the house when we moved in. Like I wish these type of chairs were worth something. <laughs> They're I everywhere. Know. <laughs> I know. So, no, go, no, go around the we'll other go side. go around into the next section. Great room, isn't it? Super yes. room. Now the floor's a bit, a bit wonky, wobbly. That's okay. What on earth are those? Speakers. God, they're they look on, as they? though they should be heaters, but yeah, Is yeah. Make on them. Quad. Yeah. 
with the bits of hi-fi that, that go with it. These look incredible, don't they? These premium speakers were designed by the British company Quad Electroacoustics in the late 1950s. Their excellent sound and simple, elegant design make them highly collectible and give them a value of £400. Where did you get these from? They were my father's. They uh, must have cost a I lot can't... in the day. Yes, really. I can't remember when he bought them. It would have been probably in the 70s. Mm. I really like them, just, to, just their style. They're yes. really cool. My father got rid of these a few years ago when he decided that he'd have a smaller hi-fi set. Because mm. they're far too big for a... Anything. A yes, <laughs> yes. But stylistically, they are really good-looking. Mm. A lot of people like yes. the sort of retro yes. amps and retro mm. computer mm. games now and all, you know. So I don't know whether these would these would got some legs because they're just great looking, great looking. W would you sell them? Yes. And, and if oh, so, yes, what would you want for them? Hmm. A couple of hundred. <laughs> <laughs> they're all going totally stuck. Yeah. Not a clue. Um, I have to be honest, I looked and I thought, oh, 100 quid. Right. That's what I thought, because I just don't know whether or not they are totally useless. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is in Yorkshire at Alstwick Hall, a luxury bed and breakfast guest house owned by Michael Pearson. In the attic, he's bid on a pair of stylish British speakers designed in the 1950s. But it's less than Michael hoped for. Will he accept? I don't know. Do you want to meet in the middle, 150? What do you say? Um, yes, I'll accept. Yeah. 150. Let's have a deal. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. See, that's nice and easy to load up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strange old day at Oswick Hall today. Um, beautiful place. And ended up buying a retro pair of speakers and stereo system. Never seen those before. Incredibly stylish. Very much of their time. And that I like, because they just, they're just they sort of stuck in that time. I should imagine in the day they were extremely expensive, probably one of the best of their type. That's always going to be worth something. Slightly disappointed that Drew didn't take more of our rubbish, but really pleased that he has decided to take the speakers, yeah, yeah, yeah. the hi-fi set. And uh, who knows? I'd like to think that both of us have come off well, but uh, I don't think either of us are too sure about that. They are the strangest looking speakers I've ever seen. They're super stylish, aren't they? Yes, yes, they're, they're of their time, aren't they? Very much, exactly, they're mm. very much of their time. Well, thank you very much. Nice meeting really you. Really enjoyed it. All the best. Wonderful hotel. Lovely, yes. lovely, very nice. Okay. okay, thank you. Safe journey. Thank you very much. Thanks, bye. bye. Isn't it stunning around here? It is beautiful. It's like a little time capsule, the whole place, isn't it? Very much like the speakers we've just bought. Like a time capsule? Like a time capsule. 1970s. <laughs> Don't you get 1970s grooves out of them? If you turn that on, you are not allowed to play any music after 1979 on those speakers. Is that because it affects the, them? It's the law. Oh, it just won't work. Why? When did Wagner was pre-79, surely? He's all right. Yeah. A bit of, love a bit of Wagner. Not a great day financially. So, on his way back to base, Drew is going to stop off at one of his regular stomping grounds to see if he can turn the trip around. It's an 80 mile drive southwest to visit an antiques and bric a brac shop in Liverpool. The largest coastal city in the north of England, it's thought that Liverpool once had 40% of the world's trade go through its ports in the 19th century. Today, the city is perhaps best known as the birthplace of the Beatles. We're off to see some lads I know, uh, Paul Swainbank, and uh, been traders in Liverpool and dealers since the 50s with his dad. We'll buy anything as long as it's weird and wonderful and strange. Situated opposite Edge Hill Railway Station, Tunnel Furniture was established in 1957 and carries everything from antique furniture and industrial items to curios and church furnishings. Uh, I haven't got a clue what he's going to buy, but 
but I hope we've got something in here for him. As long as they're offering him money, we'll take it. <laughs> so we, we're going to buy some Beatles memorabilia today as well? Then. Unlikely. I was offered um, Beatles war four brand new unused rolls of Beatles wallpaper yesterday. Really? Oh, shit. <laughs> I must admit, I thought, <laughs> what? So we'd know. We, would you want the Fab Four looking down on you in your bedroom? No, no definitely no. not. Definitely not. Oh, actually, where we are now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's quite a big building, actually. Mm. Deceptive. I think it's part of the old station. That's what it was. It used to be the stables for the station. Ah. <laughs> Hiya. Hi, Trev. How are you doing? Just coming in. Hi, Phil. Nice to you. So, I'm looking for stock. There's plenty of You know the sort of thing I want. Yeah. I've not been to this one. I've not been here. Been here a while. Oh, it's bigger than I thought, actually, isn't it? First impressions of the place are good. It looks like a really good sort of trade warehouse, really. Um, the lads over in Liverpool here are getting stuff through their hands on a regular basis. So what's the good gear you've got in at the moment? Anything that uh, you think I should be looking at? Uh, the way the job's gone, we wouldn't have what anyone's buying anymore. Do you know, I don't, actually. It's more just... <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get those from? Came out of an airport. Despite the huge array of items, nothing seems to be grabbing Drew's attention. Not having much luck. No, no we'll today. Find something. I usually, I usually find something. What is it with having no arms? <laughs> Why have they got no arms? Any of them? Same <laughs> yeah, as well. Figures, yeah. <laughs> no arm religious figures. Well, so one day somebody's going to want them. I, mean, I quite like him. These guys know what they're. They've got, and they know what I'm looking for, so I'm just waiting to find that one good piece, to be perfectly honest with you. What, what are they made out of? I think the slate. Slate pillars. Oh. Must have come off a chimney piece or something, maybe. These late 19th century carved pillars are made of Welsh slate and are attractive to both interior and garden designers. Because of their age and excellent condition, they may be worth up to £200. They're quite interested. Be 50 quid the pair? 50 quid the pair? Well, I'd be mad not to buy those, to be honest, wouldn't I? Yeah, OK, 50 quid, I'll have that. Thank you. We came around the corner in the warehouse here and there's a pair of carved, what I thought at the time were wooden um, columns, just a small architectural element. Look a bit closer and he says to me, oh, they're, they're slate. Brilliant. They're really well made as well, which most of the stuff in the 19th century in Liverpool was as good as you'd get anywhere. I see you're on the skeleton staff now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around the whole place once, and with places like this, usually what I do is go around again the other way and then just wander through. The guys here are really nice. They're happy to let me do that. You just never know, because there's so much stuff, I could miss something. I don't usually, but I could. Um, tell us about that chair. That's interesting. It's got a really good maker's mark and it's adjustable. Never seen one that just like that before. No, I'll get it down later. If you can, yeah, can we have a look at it? This ebonised rattan chair with height adjustable base was made by the firm North England School Furnishings Limited in the late 19th century. It's a fine example of the aesthetic movement and it could be worth £350. I'll go back and get some of those real good makers. There. That's interesting, isn't it? Darlington. North of England. Something. Oh, is this this, um, what's it outfitters? Church outfitters Where's from the Darlington. School, school fitters. No, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that model of chair before. These twists and it goes up there. Yeah. How strange. It's a weird one, isn't it? I think that's quite interesting, actually. <laughs> What we yeah. can do. Shame about the seat. 80 Sorry. quid. 80 quid. 80 quid. Yes, yeah, sold. I'll have that. Thank you very much. What a strange thing. The chair, again, just screamed at me as soon as I'm walking around. There's thousands of items in it. It's got that. Never seen that before. And that twin pillar arrangement for the support for the seat. Very unusual. Then to find it's sprung, not just adjustable, it's sprung and steel, and it's got a maker's mark, and it's original. It's got everything going for it. 
God, it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really... It's like sitting on the pan. You just put a seat without sitting in it first. Which I know, you don't normally I know, do. I know, I know, I know. Still. That chair will go to somebody with a design-orientated mind because it will look extremely good by itself. You know, if you've got a quite a nice plain room, could be completely modern, put that in. All of a sudden, it's interesting. You're interesting, the room's interesting, the chair's interesting. It shows it off to its best effect. Good day, to be honest with you. Very quick, in, out, bought a couple of things, kept my contact with the lads up here in Liverpool, because it's right on my doorstep. And that's the key to what we do. Nip in, yes, that'll do, out again, and keep doing it. Yeah, it's gone well. Drew's bought a few pieces. He bought everything that you wouldn't expect him to buy, as usual. And he's just had a good look around. There's a quid to be made, but not a, not a lot. But it's keeping that connection. That's the important thing about today. Oh. It's getting cold, isn't it? It's certainly a bit chilly out there today. Well, I've been studying wildlife films. You've been studying wildlife films? Yeah, I now have layers of blubber. That seems to be the way forward. <laughs> half man, half seal. It's a quick 50-mile trip back to the showroom. Hello. Hello. Very nice. Marble. The pillars out. Oh, are they? No, they're not the slate. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> Welsh <laughs> marble, that is. Welsh marble. <laughs> Welsh marble. Blina. Yeah, that's heavy. And, but I did get one interesting thing. Really interesting thing. We're keeping it warm. Got loads of them. Guess what it is? Unveiling. Land Rover. <laughs> it's a jigsaw. <laughs> Camel. Oh. Weird chair. Yes. Aesthetic movement. I love it. Ebonised. Oh, true, it's gorgeous. Oak and pine. The chair, it's spectacular, actually. The design of it is so unusual. I love Ooh. that. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Quite a bang on it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The next morning, Gavin begins restoring the ebonised rat and chair. And scraping away a century's worth of dirt and debris takes some effort. Meanwhile, Drew and T are off to look for more stock. Some of Drew's favourite places to rummage through are schools, and today he's lined up a visit to one of the country's most prestigious colleges. It's over a 300-mile drive southeast to the small town of Lansing, near Brighton. So it's Brighton today? Uh, well, yeah, we're very, very near Brighton, that's for sure. Um, we're off to see Lansing College, which I've never been to. I've heard of it, but I've never been to it. I'm Jeremy Tomlinson. I've, I've been working at Lansing for most of my life uh, as a teacher and housemaster and a registrar for recruitment of pupils. But most of that time I've also been involved with looking after the chapel and I'm continuing to do that. Founded in 1848, Lansing College is an independent co-ed boarding school which places high emphasis on strong academic achievement and Anglican Christianity. It's distinguished for having the largest school chapel in the world. The chapel is, in fact, unfinished. Its building process over nearly 150 years um, has been an expensive and extremely complex one, but a certain amount of money is still needed, so any amount of money, even very small, would be very welcome. It's got a good feeling about this one. Apparently pretty spectacular. Right. Um, and I've got a feeling it's always had a, a moneyed background. That's it. You can't go in there. there. They go in there. Wow. My word. Look at that. I think imposing would be a good word. Wow. Try not to crash the van. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's a massive statement, isn't it? That is a huge statement. This is our chapel. It's massive. It's stunning. Look how tall it is. It's like a church on top of a church. And that is something else, isn't it? Hi there. Hello. Drew. Welcome. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello. How are you, you doing? You OK? Fantastic. Good. Come in oh, before you get we? cold. Yes. yes. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh. Here we are. 
Yes, <laughs> that's what it should do to you. It's, um, it's designed to make you look up. This is amazing. Who designed this? Somebody called, Car well, two, father and son, Richard and Herbert Carpenter, who were uh, uh, mid-19th century Gothic revival church restorers and architects. Yeah. And I think it's not a, perhaps as widely known as it should be. No, but I'd, it, never, it, it I'd is, never heard of it. It's, I'd no idea are. this was I here. Mean, it's, it's an astonishing building. Just that. noticed that window. Right? Yes, that's later. Oh. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. The rose <laughs> window. The rose window, yeah. Um, great. That's amazing. The west wall, including the rose window and the organ case, uh, were not done until the 1970s. And in fact, the porch that should be on the west end is still not done, so there's some... Um, this is amazing. To do. This is an incredible building. Really? Yes, it is. It, it is an it incredible is. building, isn't it? So, um, are we looking at anything in here? Just we are looking at some things in the crypt. I mean, I'd hope you'd have a look at the... Because underneath the east end here, there is a, a superb crypt, a really... Oh, yes, another please. very beautiful, yeah, yeah. with come, some lovely come, windows. Can we go and have a look uh, at that? We can have a look at that. And there is also, the, at the west end of the crypt, there is some storage space where there is who yes, knows yeah, what, which yeah. you can have a look into please, and see, that, see what that, you that may I find. I definitely want to see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going... Where so to we're now? Do that. Well, we need to go back to the other that way, yes. What an astonishing place. Um, the building is nothing short of jaw-dropping. Uh, the position where it is is just incredible, and it sets it off. I had no idea this was here. What an amazing place. Because the chapel's built into a hillside, yeah. th at this end, you haven't got a, a lot of space, and then when you get to the end, the, the crypt opens out into a chapel which was actually used as the school chapel before the upper building was completed. Oh, look and, at that. That's it, it, really it is beautiful, isn't it? A really wasn't it? Very yeah, beautiful remarkable. space. And then you've got the apse at the east oh. end with some really good Clayton and Bell windows. Clayton and Bell, one of my favourites. Wonderful. And they are very That's beautiful an windows. That's Christ figure, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's got a real sense of agony about it. I'm incredibly positive about what we can find here today. What this place has got and had is an awful lot of money thrown at it when it was first built. This is money, no object stuff. What I need to find is something that relates in period to this build or the school itself. That would be really interesting. After enjoying the magnificence of the building, as promised, Jeremy takes Drew to the crypt where the school stores antiques from its long history. Oh, you've got chapel chairs. So there yeah. are chapel chairs. Yeah. There are, yes, there are quite a few. I mean, obviously, some of these are very dilapidated, which is why they're in here. Yeah. But I'm more wary about selling chapel chairs because, um, because of the possibility that we might use them. Yeah. Have you got a torch on your tea? I have. I've had a good look at the chapel chairs. Um, they're mostly odd, mostly broken, and in not great condition. And there's only a few of them. There's only ten, maybe. Um, so we're going to leave those. They're just not worth it. I need runs of chairs, sort of 20 plus. That's what I'm after. Now these, in fact, are school benches, which have been used in the chapel, but they really are from the dining hall, uh, okay. which is another splendid Victorian Gothic building. I like the look of that one. That, that one. Yes, that, that, and the one underneath is quite a good. Do you, can we, do you want to turn it over? Yeah. Right. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that, I, that's really quite lovely, isn't it? That's a nice, very nice thing and, and quite attractively An awful lot earlier than the building. Earlier than this building? Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I should assume early 19th century, but of course you never know where they got their school furniture from. This early 19th century bench is made of pine and would have been used by the pupils in the dining hall. Because of its simple design and attractive patina, it could fetch around £400. Is there any of these left, or is this the only one? Uh, there are one or two others of these around, but, but I mean, uh, uh, most of them were, were disposed of at some stage because you can't keep everything. No. I imagine these have been used in the chapel at some stage and then just stored in here. You know, so I reckon this is from the 1830s. That, well... The school was founded in 1848, but it is more than likely that these were second-hand yeah. pieces of furniture that had probably been, been in the school since, since it started. 
Uh, would these be something you'd want to dispose of? I think it wouldn't be impossible for us to dispose of one of these, yes. Okay. Um, what would I pay for that? Um, uh, £175 pounds for that one. No, let's say £200 pounds I'd pay for that one. You would? I would, because mm. it's just so nice. It's perfect, isn't it? It's just wonderful. It's, it's really good. I mean, yeah. it's very... I mean, it sort of tells a story. You've got yeah. to get the whole idea. It's got problems. I mean, you've got breaks you're going for, the, to have to for the top of the tenons all over here. You somehow yeah. replaced. Or yeah. Really you don't reckon you could do 250? No. I'm only saying that because we are thinking about the conservation and completion of the okay. chapel, you know. You, you very can, much you, you appreciate can pull it. Strings, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in full business mode now. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm in full conservation mode. <laughs> Drew Pritchard is at Lansing College, an impressive public school near Brighton. He spotted a 19th century dining bench, but will Chapel Secretary Jeremy Tomlinson be prepared to sell? You can't pay more than 200. If I, I just think I'd be, I'm just, it's, it, it, 200 is sort of a very strong bid. Look, uh, uh, let, let's meet in the middle, 225. Yes, I help? wondered about 225. I think 225 Let's will have be... Let's a deal. <laughs> Thank <laughs> we'll you. We'll do a deal at 225. I've just bought a really beautiful little bench, and I paid way too much money for it because it's special. I'm always buying stuff, and every now and again, something just jumps out, and those little tiny things make it a little bit better than the norm. Um, beautiful peg construction. Um, Fabulous wear and patina, um, so I'm happy to buy it. And as a first purchase in somewhere like this, what it does is it opens the doors and it, it sort of does ease things. You sort of, I'm, I'm paying to be here now. On to a second storage area, the unused tables. OK, there we go. So we'll see what there is in here. This. So, yeah, that's... A possibility. Wow. There's a bit of library table, vernacular library table, oak. That is a monster, and hasn't been in store for very long. This large oak table from the mid 19th century once sat in the library of the college. Its solid construction and original design give it a value of up to two thousand five hundred pounds. It's a little low, isn't it? Should there be an extra section below the cross things looking up? You'd the think... middle stretch of there. See, yeah. see where it's chipped to the left-hand yeah. side, where it's lighter. Yeah. It's almost as if they've cut it. But it's nice. It's very nice. If they can get that out, I'm, I'm, I'd love to buy it. What sort of price do you have in mind? What's where do we need to be to, really to purchase this? Yeah. Um, and it's a little wide, but still, it's it's a great table, all in all. Five hundred. Five hundred. Do you know what? That's not enough. I know it sounds nuts, but that's not enough. I can't be seen to buy this at £500. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to pay you £800 for it. Oh, OK? That's, good. that's still a good price for me, to be honest with you. Is it? It is, yes, it is. Uh, £500, I'd rather, I'd rather just be straight with you and, and, and give you the right price for it. But you have well, if you, if you've nice got feet. six guys to get it out... Uh, otherwise, we can come back. We can come back, but it's, it's, it's about seven hours in the van to get down here. But we can come back for it. It's not for me to say. I, I, if we can get it out, we'll do it, but I suspect uh, coming, coming no. back for it would be more sensible. OK, all right. Well, let's shake on that. OK, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, well, that. I'm happy with that. That's more than I would yeah, have thought. Yeah, it's just uh, that's, that's, that's really. really. The only thing wrong with that table is it's massive. Apart from that, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's an absolute gem. The uh, joined stretcher that goes all the way around the base is really lovely, a great detail. Um, the wear on it's good. We know exactly where it was made for. You know, it's got everything going for it. And I ended up, uh, that was going to be the bargain of the day. And even at £800, it's a bargain. So, and uh, I couldn't really just pay the 500 It was just, it, that would just be wrong of me. Well, look, I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to send some guys in to get it. Okay. And we're not going to take that today. Um, we'll take it out and put it there and then come back up. And that's fine. Leave it in here, obviously, it. until... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and then, don't worry. And then uh, they'll, they'll come mm. for it. Yes, we'll be done. keep it the best thing about that purchase. Hmm? I don't have to carry it today. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to get involved in moving that. We'll get some, we'll get some great big blokes yeah. in to yeah. do that, and then Gavin that's can deal with it when we get back. Yeah. 
Great. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thanks okay. So I only bought two items today. Um, with somewhere like this, what you want is to be called back again, and that's what I hope will happen. You know, either next year or ten years' time. You know, it's uh, this isn't a race, so I'll be happy to come back. And also, I've been somewhere today, which is quite astonishing. <laughs> it's been a very good day, and uh, it's good to meet Drew, who's. A, a good character and, uh, and you know, obviously knows a great deal about so the business. Very good to see you. We'll be in touch with the table. Great, thank you. Bye-bye. Financially today will work out well once the table's finished and sold. When it's sold, it'll turn a good profit, but it's not going to be something that's going to sell tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit of a slow burn, that one. It's going to take a while to find the right person. What a place. Amazing, isn't it? Huge, isn't it? And you don't know it's here? No. No idea it was here. Did it? And I've driven down this area so many times. So many times. Ooh, sports today. Ooh. Ooh. Cold. Oh Cold dear. Oh no. The chapel. Gobsmacking. You don't even know where to start, you just no. go. I think you've run out of superlatives after being yeah. down here, you just sort of go. What, what, ooh, ooh. I think it, it, it's <laughs> astonishing, jaw-dropping, yeah. and lost for words. I, I think, think it's the word. Was actually quite a good description of it. <laughs> there you go. That's a good description, like, isn't it? Like a Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Scooby-Doo in the chapel. Hi, T. Hello. Hello. How are we? How are you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. Good. Good time. We went down to Sussex, yep. and um, we know we were going to Lansing College. Yep. And we got that. Oh, primitive, <laughs> primitive <laughs> school bench. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> it's lovely. Isn't actually. that gorgeous? Yeah. Long. Yeah, really. But you, you hit the nail on the head with primitive, which it, it really. It really it's, is. It, it, yeah. It, it's. Well. It's not a pure definition of it, but it's not bad. Um, but it's just got something a little bit extra about it, hasn't it? And the, the I love it, actually. I love it. The, the, oh. na it's naive, isn't, isn't it? Yeah, very. Yeah, very good. See, I'm <laughs> learning. For, do this for a living. Um, <laughs> but what we did buy was... I've got a photograph yeah, of it, actually. I'll pop this inside. We bought this table as well, round the sheds. And we bought... Yeah. This isn't the actual table, but it's another one they had in, in the building. Oak, library table, 1880, oh. designed for... Lansing College Library. And you've bought that? Not that one. I bought one that's been outside for a while, so it's that, but tatty. And you'll be able to get this tatty one up to this standard? Yes, no problem. Well, great stuff. Well, Alex will. Yeah. yeah. But no, we'll get that collected now. Go and organise getting it collected okay. now um, with the bursa down there and we're done. OK. Yeah. Sure. So. Later. Where's the chair? The chair that Drew bought at Tunnel Antiques is ready for inspection. Nice. Lovely job. Just need to get that done now. Ugh. Get it over to Alex. Get it sent off. I like the job, though. I like the colour. It's nice. I like it. Lovely job. 